Alright everybody, welcome back to another Dark Souls 3 video, and some of you may have been put off by the slightly odd choice in the opening music, not your traditional video game music, but that's because we're not using a traditional, you know, weapon, so to speak. We're using a very elegant weapon, and as a result, I figured I'll put in some very elegant-like music. Um, take from that what you will, I don't know, just trying to mix things up. But today we're looking at the Eleonora. This is a weapon unique to Dark Souls 3, and... It is a standard small axe, which I've mentioned before in previous videos, aren't very good on their own. But coupled with the shield, they can actually uh, get a lot of work done on opponents. They can be really aggressive and they can punish rolls, which you're going to see me do throughout this matchup. Um, but one of the kind of more unique things about this weapon is its weapon art. Now, it does take a really long time to start up the weapon art. So it's not something you're going to really whip out mid-match. And it does only last for 24 seconds. So... What I would recommend with this weapon is really rush down your opponent while you have this weapon active. I mean, the weapon art, if you want to kind of get some use out of it, you can take some hits, and every time you hit your opponent, you're going to gain back 24 HP. So it's actually, you know, if you can get two or three hits and even blocks in on your opponent, you're still going to gain that HP regen. And it also adds a bleeding effect, which in my opinion is kind of useless. You're probably going to kill somebody with the actual hits from the weapon before you bleed them. Um, you know, more research probably has to be done on that. But I was, I don't think I've ever gone up against this weapon. So I figured why not review something that you don't really see. But right now in this fight club, you're going to see us kind of go up against a gauntlet of players. And we actually come out on top on every single fight. Um, I, was, I wasn't really expecting to win uh, this fight club. Um, and oddly enough, this was the only fight club I was summoned to. I was summoned to one more... Uh, duel where you know a guy was summoning phantoms one by one and I beat two phantoms there and then the host ended up coming to fight me and we beat him so overall I mean the strategy alone of approaching an opponent with a shield um, behind any weapon not just an axe but axes in particular work kind of well there you can see it again um, is actually quite effective you can go up to your opponent right if they attack you can sidestep around while blocking not taking damage and then backstab um, if they're kind of prepping for an attack or something, again, you can approach them without worrying about, you know, having to worry about, oh, the timing for the roll, or am I within range, do I have to kind of back away and roll away? What do I have to do? With the shield, especially with the Black Knight shield, because it has such high stability for a medium shield, and, you know, really great resistant properties um, in terms of absorption for elements and 100% physical, um, it is a weapon, or sorry, it is a shield that can withstand a lot of abuse from weapons. Um, However, <laughs> unlike what I just did right there, you got, you're going to want to make sure that you actually have it up so that you don't get hit from your opponent um, when you approach them. Now, when you play against an opponent who really likes to wait for you to attack before they attack, you're going to have to mix up your play style a little bit more. That is one of the ways to kind of beat the shield. Enemies aren't really going to try to attack through your shield if they notice they're not making any headway with it, right? Um, of course, there are other players who will try to be overly aggressive on you and break your guard with your shield. Uh, the Karthus Curve Sword, Katanas and stuff are some examples of that. But with the shield, you can usually, you know, if you're good at timing, um, kind of, you know, mix it up so that you can still hit them. And right there, I mean, I don't know why people were... This is the second guy in the Fight Club. And this is the guy I beat, like, I think the first guy I beat in the Fight Club. Summoned back again. I don't know if he was, like, angry at me or something, but he attacked me while I was stuck in the weapon buff animation. So um, I just decided to, uh, you know heal from that cheap shot and then get the fight started but you can see how many backstabs we're getting or how many backstabs we go for with this weapon um, just because coupling it with the shield does make it all that more effective now the damage on this weapon you know it is not really all that great um, I mean it, it is kind of respectable dealing around 200 to around 240 depending on the opponent's armor and their defense however it's gonna kind of fall short of that short sword um, Damage, So it, it technically will be outclassed by a, a, a straight sword to some degree, but that's why you're using the shield. Now, of course, being a smaller weapon, you do have to watch for the parries. But one thing I did notice, um, there wasn't very many people who tried to parry me with this weapon, but the weapon does seemingly have a little bit of a slower startup than a straight sword. So the parrying timing for most people um, is a little bit thrown off. So it's not really as predictable as some other people might think, unless they're really used to fighting against these kind of weapons. Um, there again, you can see the excellent ability of just approaching an opponent and roll catching them, uh, which is something you're going to have to do with this axe, because unlike a straight sword, you can't, like, catch a stray roll. 
You have to actually keep approaching them as they roll and then you have to catch them after you moved in a bit after they roll. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but with a straight sword, you can just spam R1s, right? And even if you roll once, you're still going to get caught at the end of your roll from a straight sword. With an axe, it doesn't work that way, with a short axe. Um, unless they patch some mechanics soon, which I hope they do. But it's one of the reasons why axes aren't really as good as straight swords. So what you're going to want to do with, with the axe to catch enemies that are rolling is keep approaching them as they roll. And, you know... After you've approached them a little bit after they've rolled, you are kind of close the gap for the hitbox of your axe um, to hit the enemy, uh, the enemy's hurt box. So you'll you'll get a lot of roll catches that way, and you'll keep on your opponent, and you'll you know really be aggressive and force them to kind of play defensive a lot through that kind of uh, play style. Um, now this guy you saw at the beginning of this fight here, where he had his shield up and I was still attacking him, and the effect of the weapon art was still activated. So I would still gain back the HP if I. Uh, did take some damage, but you know, th that's the kind of sucky thing about some of these weapon arts and things like Blessed Weapon is the fact that you know they only get activated at the beginning of the fight for PvP, and you know, you're not taking any damage really at the beginning of the fight usually, so um, it is kind of useless to some degree, uh, especially since the bleed effect isn't really all that useful. But you know, it, it, it's still an advantage that you can have for the beginning 25 seconds of a fight, which can make a bit of a difference for sure. Um, so don't get me wrong, it's not completely useless, it's just not as useless as, or not as useful, sorry, as other weapon art. So don't be trying to throw out this weapon art mid-fight. Uh, it is not something you're going to want to do with that. Now, something I kind of overlooked with this was actually using this weapon two-handed. I didn't use it two-handed at all. Um, I did use a few R2s and stuff, but for the most part, the R1 with the axe is your go-to move. It is fast, like I mentioned. It can contest uh, a lot of things. It can roll catch a lot of things. It's not... It's seemingly not as fast as a straight sword, um, but you know the startup of the, of the attack seems to be a little bit more uh, delayed than a straight sword. But when you actually end up swinging it down, it's just like a straight sword. It comes out really fast, and you're able to catch a lot of opponents there. Again, you can see I contested um, his uh, ultra great sword. That's a fair and great sword, I think, is what he's using because I don't know why he's using it with a shield, but whatever. Um, you can see me contest him earlier, and I still won. I think you're going to see it again where I contest him, and I went out against the trade again. Just because the weapon is fast. There was kind of a an odd exchange there where we both somehow got backstab animations. But, uh, you know, we're still on top. Um, there again, you see the roll catch. And now we're going to kind of go in and try to get him on the uh, throwing knife. See if we can finish him off. Sometimes, I mean, he is using a silver knight shield, so he could technically parry. And when I'm going for those two R1 hits in a row, it's really e easy to parry those kind of things. Um, you know, after you block the first R1, you can easily just parry right after, and you'll essentially always get um, the follow-up R1. So be wary of that if you're fighting somebody with a parrying shield. Um, and the Silver Knight shield, in my opinion, is probably the best shield to uh, block and parry with. I know some people think the Lothric Knight shield is good, and it is, but in my opinion, I think it weighs more. Um, and it might have a little bit more stability, but it's not really worth it in my opinion. Um, I like the Silver Knight Shield. And of course the Black Knight Shield. The Knight Shields, those are the best ones in my opinion. Uh, so we ended up kind of going through the gauntlet with that Fight Club. We had no more real resources left. I mean, we had I think one or two Estes, but it wasn't going to be enough to pull, put us back to full health. Um, so I just decided to go home instead of just waiting around for more Estes to regenerate in while other people fought. So uh, we go into some 1v1s against some hosts, and again, you're just going to see uh, the, the rushdown capabilities of an, of an axe and a shield. Um, and I know I've said before when I reviewed, I think, the Dragon Slayer axe, that axes, small axes in general, aren't really that good. But, you know, like I mentioned in one of my uh, recent videos, that it just takes experimenting and learning what's good or what makes this weapon class good and using it with the shield definitely makes it a lot more viable than it is by itself and that is because you can really rush down your opponent and keep them rolling keep them you know uh not necessarily frustrated but kind of just you know mitigate all their attacks with your shield and then go in for punishes on rolls and stuff like that like i mentioned and that that play style as you can see throughout this uh montage has been extremely effective uh for us so um, I was actually surprised that we won, um, you know, <laughs> every single match with the weapons. So 
it was I mean I, I've never I've never used this weapon before and I, I mean I have used the Dragon Slayer axe but I didn't think axes were all that good but I was just surprised at how effective this tactic was so if you're trying to you know experiment with some other weapons um, definitely using a shield can make the difference on some of these smaller or lower tier weapons and right there that backstab that's kind of like the backstab that I get angry at when somebody gets it on me or like the guy was facing me and I still backstabbed him and I don't think I meant to clap I don't know why I ended up coming up with the clap emotion or something I meant to do like you know wow I can't believe that happened kind of kind of thing um, but I mean I don't know I, I one thing I hope is that the DLC includes some new gestures that would be pretty sick you know there were some awesome gestures over the course of Demon Souls Dark Souls 1 Dark Souls 2 that I would love to see make their way into Dark Souls 3 just for you know the trolling and stuff like that but who knows um, this is actually the host from that fight club coming down to fight me and uh, I don't know what his game plan was really um, because, I mean, he obviously wanted to fight me, but he all he did was block and run away. So I'm not too sure what exactly happened. And then, I don't know if he meant to heal here, but I wasn't going to exploit the fact that he made a mistake. So I was like, alright, well, we'll just keep going here. And, you know, I mean, unfortunately, this is why I don't invade people. Because when you invade people, you get, you get players like that. I mean, no offense to the guy, but his build obviously isn't meant for PvP, right? I mean, two hits from this weapon broke his guard with the shield and I wasn't even using the knight's ring right so um you know it's not a challenge not something that's going to stimulate you in, in a fight but that's pretty much the video guys let me know what you think um hopefully you enjoyed this kind of unique look at a unique weapon let me know what else you guys want to see I think I might be doing the executioner executioner sword next so stay tuned for that if you want to see it and uh you know drop a like on the video it's really appreciated and uh subscribe if you haven't already and check out the uh, channel for more Dark Souls 3 content. Thanks again, guys. Quantum is out.